Yes, I am. All right. Good evening and welcome to tonight's Board of Education meeting. Let's all stand for the Pledge of Allegiance, please. Let's remain standing for a moment of silence, please. You may be seated. <clears throat> In accordance with the Open Public Meeting Act, adequate notice for this meeting was advertised in the record posted at the board office and filed with the city clerk. I hereby call to order the regular public meeting on May 22nd in the Hackensack Media Center at 6.16 p.m. Ms. Singh, will you please do a roll call? Okay. Mr. Bendezu is absent. Mr. Carroll? Present. Mr. Coleman? Present. Ms. Cordero Alton? Present. Ms. Mori? Present. Mr. Powell? Present. Ms. Somerville? Present. Mr. Rodriguez? Present. Mr. James Vickery? Present. We have a quorum. All right. Be it resolved that the Hackensack Board of Education determines it necessary to meet in the executive session on Monday, May 22nd, 2023, to discuss legal, personnel, student-related ma student matters, HIV reports, negotiations, and other confidential matters. And be it further resolved that these matters will be made public when the need for confidentiality no longer exists. Can I have a motion to go into executive session, please? Motion. Mr. Powell, thank you. Can I have a second? Second. Ms. Cordero Alton, thank you. All those in favor, say aye. 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 Any opposed? And there are none. It is 17. We need a few minutes. Yeah. To, um,
All right, welcome back. We have a couple of presentations that we need to do that we are very excited about. So first up, we have the New Jersey State Seller by Literacy Award. Um, and this would be um, Director Marcella Moncloa is going to lead that. Oh, I'm sorry, I messed up. We need to do a roll call first, but you can stand right there knowing that it won't take but a second. Uh, Mr. Bendezu is absent. Mr. Carroll? Present. Mr. Coleman? Present. Ms. Cordero Alton? She didn't believe it. Okay. Uh, Ms. Mori? Present. Mr. Powell? Present. Ms. Somerville? Present. Mr. Rodriguez? Present. Mr. James Vickery? Present. We have a quorum. I was so excited. I'm sorry I forgot that part. Go ahead. <laughs> Good evening, everyone. Prior to our presentation of the New Jersey State Seal of Biliteracy, the Department of Bilingual Education, ESL, and World Languages is proud to recognize two Hackensack High School seniors who have attained proficiency in both the Advanced Placement Spanish Language and Culture Test and the Advanced Placement Literature and Culture Test. In addition, these students have passed their state language arts test to demonstrate proficiency in English. We are proud that our district promotes excellence in biliteracy. Antes de presentar el sello de lecto escritura, queremos reconocer a dos estudiantes del último año que han logrado dominio en dos idiomas con ambas pruebas de eh, colocación avanzada. Además, estos estudiantes han pasado sus pruebas de inglés y estamos orgullosos de que nuestro distrito promueva la excelencia en la alfabetización bilingüe. Please join me in congratulating these students. Vamos a felicitar a estos estudiantes. Zia Suki. Lizette Lasso Quintuna. Lizette might not be here yet. Thank you. Okay. Okay. Now on to the New Jersey State Seal of Biliteracy Awards. The New Jersey State Seal of Biliteracy is an award given by the New Jersey Department of Education in recognition of students who have attained proficiency in at least one language in addition to English by high school graduation. The New Jersey Department of Education established the State Seal of Biliteracy in 2016 to help students recognize the value and benefits of bilingualism, including cultural understanding and social acceptance. This honor is designated on a high school student's diploma and identifies graduates who have prioritized the study of other languages and cultures. In 2016, the state of New Jersey firmed the law of implementation of the law of lecture escritura in two languages. And as a recognition for students who have graduated demonstrating competence in more than one language, the state law emphasizes the importance of bilingualism, the comprehension cultural and the acceptation social. At this time, we would also like to acknowledge and congratulate our two advanced placement teachers of Spanish and Italian language and culture, Ms. Mercedes Hernandez. And Ms. Carelia Tejada, who's cheering us on from home. Now for the student awards. Please join us in acknowledging the students who have earned the seal in Spanish and English. Ahora, por favor, felicitemos juntos a los estudiantes que han ganado este sello en lecto escritura en español e inglés. Samantha Cadman. Ana Franco. Kimberly Gomez Quintero. Thank you. 
They're getting two awards. One is from the state. It is the state seal of biliteracy. And one is from our dear district that is so proud of them. Saranji Mendoza in Triago. Sorry about that. Felix Martinez de los Santos. Uh, Angelica Morquecho. Carol Paredes Fajardo. And Ludwika Blaze Valencia. Please join us in acknowledging the students who have earned the state seal of biliteracy in English and Italian. Tanti auguri per le studenti che hanno ottenuto il sigillo di bilinguismo in inglese e italiano. Kaylee Penesaka. So please keep in mind that our Italian uh, Seal of Biliteracy awardees, none of them are heritage speakers. So we're so proud of them. Angeli Angelo Valencia. David Balareso. And Jennifer Vivar Altamirano. Hooray! I can just see the picture of you. All right. Congratulations to everybody. So Next up, we have our alternative program presentation by Mr. Montesano and team, or just Mr. Montesano and company, okay. <laughs> Good evening, everyone. Um, a few months ago, I guess, Mr. Sanchez asked us to kind of look into an alternative program setting for some of our students who were struggling during the traditional school setting. Uh, what we have found is our high school motto is reaching all learners. And, you know, again, there's many different paths. I even look at, you know, my own children at home. There's many different paths so that they can become successful. And I think this alternative program is just an additional way for our students to become successful. So what we'd like to do tonight is just kind of explain some of our homework that we've gone through. We've actually tweaked the program a little bit since we had our last meeting based on some of the feedback we had with the curriculum committee. Um, so without further ado, I'm gonna turn it over to Ms. Adams. Thank you. Good evening. 
Trustees, Board President James Vickery, Assistant Superintendent Oates Parchment, thank you for having us here tonight. So we want to provide a quick overview of the program's core mission and goals. What we found, as Principal Montesano said, was that some of our students have some significant challenges in a traditional setting, um, particularly social emotional challenges, some behavioral challenges, and some academic challenges that have been exacerbated by the pandemic. So what we're proposing is in this alternative setting that in smaller classes, with instructors who are deliberate in forming relationships with students, that they will build those fundamental skills that they need to transition back into the traditional setting. So the alternative program will be located in the high school. It will be located in the West Wing and it will be served by a teacher coordinator who works in alignment with the administrative team. So we will support the teacher coordinator and there will also be highly qualified teachers in each subject area that have a demonstrated path of forming relationships with students. Placement will be for a minimum of one marking period. However, each student situation is different and we are um, cognizant of the fact that some students may need to stay for a longer period of time and we are prepared for that as well. There will be an intake process that the parent, the student, and all staff members that are working with the program will be, will be a part of. Um, the alternative school will be in the high school and take place from 3 to 7.30. That means that these students will not be allowed on school grounds during the traditional school day. Good evening, Board Trustees, Assistant Superintendent Oates Parchment. Um, I'm Patty Lozano, Assistant Principal at Hackensack High School, for those of you who don't know me. I'm just going to go over some program advantages. Um, all classes will have academic specialists in them. That means that in every moment, there will be someone who is certified by the state teaching the classes. The class sizes are going to be smaller. This is to differentiate for students and their needs. Um, starting time is later. Um, research does support that there is increased uh, student alertness later on in the day. And this also allows for different flexibility and schedules according to the students' needs during the intake conference. Um, curriculum, obviously all of the curriculum and all of the courses will follow the Hackensack High School course curriculum online and in co collaboration with the subject area teachers set to um, work the program. The location is here at the high school, so there won't be any issues with students getting here. And of course, the transition from the high school day uh, program to the evening program um, you know, we will have school counselors drop in and different um, social workers working with students on a daily basis, um, depending on their needs. Entrance criteria, as Ms. Adams mentioned, um, students can gain entrance to the program through the recommendation of an assistant principal for any behavioral misconduct or the recommendation by the INRS team for academic deficiency or chronic absenteeism. All recommendations for placement into the program must be approved by the building principal, and each potential student will be reviewed by the intake committee. Um, this is not taken lightly, and the committee members work together with the parent, the student, um, the assistant principal for the grade level, the school counselor, the social worker, to see what the student's needs are so that the program can bet best serve the needs of the student. And now I will turn it over to Mr. Salso King. Thank you. Uh, I'm not going to use a mic because my voice is <laughs> not the mic. Uh, so, good evening. Good evening. Come back to the whole audience. Oh, to the whole audience. Okay, here we go. <laughs> All right. So, it might, it might be a little loud because my voice does carry. Um, so, Part of the staffing that we'll have is a program coordinator. Program coordinator is important for this position because we will def we'll definitely have kids from different grades. They're at different levels. So therefore the program coordinator needs to schedule the, um, what the kid needs, what the schedule is gonna be, what classes he needs, where does he fall behind, what, where can we get this kid going and where he starts from and what is his end goal. Also, that program coordinator is also going to be updating uh, the high school administrator of where they're at in terms of the classes that he's 
completed, the classes that he needs, how his attendance is going, what's his behavior like, and things like that. Where is he improving? He's also going to be calling home in case there's of any absences, absences that are coming in to inform the parent. There's a constant communication between the school and home, and that's what the coordinator is going to do. And of course, that intake meeting that we initially have when the kid does get to say, okay, he's recommended for alternative school. And then the pro program coordinator comes in, has an initial intake meeting with the child and the parents to go over the overall arching goal of, hey, you're here, okay, you got here, don't worry about it. This is what this, is what this program is going to do for you. This is what you're going to get out of this program. And by the end, this is what you're going to be. Uh, next slide. And also part of it is we also need a security monitor. As you know, our school, there's always an event going on here. There's always something. So it's important to have someone in the building watching them as the kids come in. They'll know, they'll meet with the security monitor. They'll tell them, okay, this is today's schedule. You're going to the uh, classroom A, classroom B. They'll go in there. And also because our school is always open, we always tell the anyone who's coming in, because they're always coming in and saying, hey, listen, where's this event? They can also direct the person of where to go inside the building. And of course, with also that security person there, they can also make phone calls too with the program director to let them know, again, about the child and informing the parents if they're there, if they're, how they're doing, and keeping them informed of their current academic situation. Our goal is to always have that open communication from the home, the child, and the school. So one of the things we took away from the last uh, curriculum committee meeting was the importance, which we did know, but the importance of uh, having actually set activities and set social emotional learning things for these students, because again, they're at risk for a reason. Um, so what we would like to do is I've worked with, since our last meeting, I've talked to our drop-in coordinator and counselor just to set up various activities on job placement for students during the day, if they so desire, job skills where they can work on resume building, they can work on, you know, making different calls, because again, our drop-in center is kind of the gateway for all employers looking to hire students. Uh, and additionally, I think it's also important that these students do have some social emotional uh, groups, counseling sessions and different things like that. So again, from three to 3.30, uh, the kids, students will get lunch and they'll also have the opportunity to kind of go through some different SEL activities through our drop-in center. Um, so what we're thinking of doing or what we'd like to do is what we're proposing is a hybrid program for teachers to work with students. So the primary vehicle for students to learn will be through an online platform. One of the nice things about the platform is it has a wide array uh, where we can directly match the student schedule to what different, the different options that the online program has. Additionally, if it's a second market period, the teacher coordinator can go in and kind of take out everything they've learned in the first market period and kind of do an assessment, and then we can kind of move forward. So this way, there's no gaps in their learning when they become part of the alternative program. Additionally, we're going to have a teacher on staff. So for instance, if I'm in my math block, I'll have a math teacher available where if I'm stuck as a student, I need some assistance, I can have some one-on-one -on -one tutoring, I can have some assessment you know, building with that particular teacher and they can actually re-explain some of the skills and some of the topics that the students may be missing. Um, the other very nice thing about the program is it's in multi-different languages. So this way we can truly meet the students where they are. And again, with the ultimate uh, goal of transitioning back to the traditional school setting. Um, here's just a sample schedule that we kind of created, um, but just we, look to do more of a block scheduling approach with these students because we feel like less classes and more time on task will be beneficial. Uh, so we have basically every student will be arriving at three o'clock through our single point entry. Um, when they come in, they'll have that group's counseling session. They'll have some different job skills. And from 3 to 3.30, we'll also provide them their lunch slash dinner, depending on how you want to time it. Um, and then they'll go to a class. So class A may be from 3.30 to 5.30, and that may be English, just using it as an example. And then the second class, they may go to history. Um, one of the things I did was just to make sure we had enough time on task as I mapped out, for instance, the month of January. And I just said, if a traditional school student is getting X number of hours, actually with this schedule, the student in this alternative setting is actually getting more time on time, instructional time for each class. So it is beneficial that way as well. Um, and again, it'll just rotate. So for instance, if I finish all of my, on Friday, I have C and D classes, which could be math and science. 
picking up that following Monday, I'll just start with ENF, which would be physical education and an elective or their world language. Um, so again, I think it's, you know, again, there's many different ways for students to be successful. And I think, you know, having a program like this will not allow us to have just limited options when it, terms to, you know, when it comes to student success. Thank you. Thank you. Can I ask a quick question? Sure. Sure. Y'all just running away. <laughs> <laughs> so I just want to clarify the exact staff that it will take. So, I, so what I heard was a security monitor, a program coordinator, teachers, the drop-in worker, social worker, and school counselors. Yeah, so the, yes, the school counselor Counselors. slash, yes, yeah, so there'll be an extra position, but drop-in center is here till four o'clock. So we actually thought it would be a beneficial to have that social emotional slash dropping component during the actual school day where they're contractually houred. So this way we can kind of minimize some of the costs that are associated I with it. That was yep. the question yeah. in our prior meeting. Yes, in between yep. the it was. We thought this was a little more, right. yep. okay. so Thank based you. on the All feedback. Right. Yeah, and this was worked into the budget already, right? Yes, okay. yep, correct. All right, awesome. that's what I needed. Thank you. Thank you. Good job. <laughs> Thank you guys. And then, uh, Mr. Sapero, can I get you to come address a couple of things from the technology perspective? We've had, uh, oddly, um, some misconceptions in the community with some community members regarding technology and how we archive our videos and when and how we do all that and whether or not we edit the videos. Would you please address that? Yeah, sure. I'd be happy to clear up any questions about that. We uh, record the meetings here. Well, we stream them live. And as it's streamed, it's recorded either on Zoom or straight to YouTube. Right now, we do it virtually through Zoom. And then once that recording is completed, after the meeting is done, tomorrow, I will download the Zoom files and I'll upload them to YouTube. That's the process. There's no editing that happens in between. We don't cut anything for the sake of public you know, uh, information and making sure that it's clear and transparent. Um, the only time that you may see something change on the video is on YouTube's end, if there's a copyright claim made because of, you know, a video, a portion of the video includes any kind of copyrighted material like music or, you know, video, the content. So they may flag that portion as a copyright claim and may mute it, but that's it. There's literally nothing else that's ever edited with the videos. And then could you address how we archive things? Yeah, we archive. I mean, all the videos are posted on the website. The links are up there available under the Board of Ed tab. We never remove them. Nothing is ever removed from there. Starting in? Well, that started in 2020. I'm sorry. I apologize. So we started posting video. Well, we started live streaming and posting the videos in 2020. Prior to that, meetings were recorded on a traditional camera, a digital camera and then transferred to video and archived digitally, but not posted directly on the website. Okay, so, so. so they're like on there, and we're not gonna take them down, they're on there because it's basically, we have the access to, because it's live streamed, we yeah. now have the ability to just do that very simply. Prior to that, it was like with a video recorder type situation. Hey, correct. And then we had to, digitize it somehow and then do whatever magic happens it was just a much harder process to do and so now those are archived yeah but can be gotten at any point with upon request yes yeah and we've provided those on based on open requests you know if ever needed we okay. have them digital perfect thank you i appreciate All that right, no problem. so we um need to go back in for a few minutes to executive session so i need a motion to do that uh, mr powell thank you can I have a second, second. mr carroll any, uh, may, uh, all those in favor say aye. aye. All those opposed say no. And there are none. Thank you.
All right, welcome back. Thank you for your patience. Um, we are going to do one more little report so that we can get Ash home doing his homework, which I know he will run straight to do. Um, so we'll give it to you, sir. You already know. Uh, so oh, uh, back into it. For, I'm going to get this together tonight. <laughs> Roll call, please. Roll call first. Uh, Mr. Bendez, who is absent. Mr. Carroll. Present. Mr. Coleman. Present. Ms. Cordero Alton. Present. Ms. Mori. Present. Mr. Powell. Present. Ms. Somerville. Present. Mr. Rodriguez. Present. Mr. James Vickery. Present. Via Kapoor. Thank you. All right, now. I'm present too. Take it, uh, out, Ash. Take it away, Ash. Ash. <laughs> well, good evening to the members of the board, uh, those in attendance, and those watching from home. I'm really back to be uh, to present to you another report highlighting the upcoming events and notable achievements at Hackensack High School. Uh, let's take a closer look at the exciting end of year activities that we have set up. Starting on Wednesday, May 24th, we have the Music and Performing Arts Banquet taking place at the Elon. As an occasion to celebrate the remarkable talents of our students. On Monday, June 5, we are hosting the Top 20 Dinner at the Hasbrook Heights Hilton, honoring our high achieving students and their academic accomplishments. I'm going. <laughs> <laughs> Tuesday, on June 6, it will be a special day with the valedictorian breakfast at the terrace, followed by scholarship night at HHS. We will recognize the exceptional achievements. Ooh. Oh yeah, I'm, I'm good. We will we recognize the exceptional <laughs> achievements of our top students and their dedication to uh, academic excellence. Save the date from Monday, June 12, when the Us First Dem game basketball game will ignite school spirit with our students competing against our staff with passion and unity. Oh, that's fun. <laughs> the prom, a night of elegance and celebration, will take place on Thursday, June 14th at the beautiful West Mount Country Club creating unforgettable memories for our students. Finally, on Tuesday, June 27th, we eagerly and eagerly anticipate, anticipate the Hackensack High School graduation, a momentous event honoring our graduating class and wishing them success in their future endeavors. In addition to these exciting events, on June 7th, Hackensack High School will host an al fresco dining event during lunch periods, providing a refreshing break and an opportunity for students to enjoy food and company. Our Destination Imagination team is currently participating in the World Championship in Kansas City, Missouri, demonstrating their creativity and problem-solving skills on a global stage. Best of luck to them. Turning our attention to sports, our baseball team recently commenced the Group 4 playoffs with a home state game against Eastside at Fashini Park. I don't have the results with me right now. It was today, but this game marks a significant milestone for the Comets as it is their first home state game since 2010. Let's celebrate the achievements of our men's volleyball team who clinched the Big North Division Championship this year and reached the county finals. With an impressive record of 20 wins and only two losses, they have displayed exceptional talent and teamwork. In conclusion, Hackensack High School is buzzing with anticipation for these upcoming events and beaming with pride for the accomplishments of our students. We invite you to join us in celebrating their successes. Thank you for your attention, and we eagerly look forward to the bright future that lies ahead for our remarkable students. Thank you. Thank you, Ash. Always a pleasure. <laughs> All right. So now, yes, sir. Would it be possible for me to clarify one thing from my comments earlier? Sure. I just wanted to of apologize. Course. Uh, apologize. I, 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 when I was speaking earlier, I was referring to only from March 2020 on because we took over the technology department, took over recording as of March 2020. Prior to March 2020, it was handled by the high school TV studio crew. They were paid a stipend. I, I wasn't privy to the recording process or anything before that. And I also wasn't a part of the any, any archival of that. All I have is the files that they gave me after the fact. So thank I can't you. speak to the process prior to March 2020. OK, thank you. I appreciate that. All right, so now um, we will move to the board vacancy. 
process. So I'm going to open the floor for nominations from the board. Uh, I'd like to nominate uh, Kenneth Martin. I'm looking over his experience. So I'm impressed by his dedication to community service. Okay. I would like to nominate uh, Sophia Brown. Um, she was one out of um, seven candidates who came and Sophia Brown stood out because of her family in community service. Um, she's, she also expressed her love for helping children and um, being part of a director in a program for children. I thought that was great. Um, I loved her energy, her enthusiasm. Um, All right, thank you. Any others? Um, I would like to nominate Andrew Jude Meehan. Okay. I really was uh, taken. I have a very short list of, of the 11 individuals. Um, and this was a resume that I had printed to bring to tonight's event because I'd already um, really enjoyed what he provided on paper. And then having the opportunity this evening to hear him speak, um, I appreciated what he brings to the table as far as his education and his interest. Uh, again, I wasn't so involved in reviewing the resumes because if someone were to look at my resume per se, you might be like, how on earth and why are you up there? Um, but it's the passion with which you're going to be infusing into the board that we already have is, is what I'm most interested in. Um, so he was on my shortlist and I'd like to nominate him for that reason. Thank you. Anybody else? All right, so I'm closing nominations. And we will move to voting. So the way this works is we go in the order that nominations were received. Okay, um, Kenneth Martin was nominated by Rodriguez. So Mr. Carroll? Yes. Mr. Coleman? Yes. Ms. Cordero Alton? No. Ms. Mori? No. Mr. Powell? No. Ms. Somerville? No. Mr. Rodriguez already voted, so that's a yes. Mr. James Wickery? Yes. yes. So we have four yeses, four noes. Correct. Yes. And make sure you have the uh, nominator also say yes or no. Oh, okay. So um, yes, Rodriguez. <clears throat> yes. Sorry about that. So for Kenneth Martin, we have four yeses and four noes. All right. So second nominee was Sophia Brown. Um, Nominated by Trustee Mori. Uh, Mr. Carroll? No. Mr. Carroll is a no. Mr. Coleman? No. Ms. Cordero Alton? No. Ms. Mori is a yes. Please say yes. Yes. <laughs> yeah. I know. That. Right. <laughs> Mr. Powell? Yes. Ms. Somerville? Yes. Mr. Rodriguez? No. Mr. James Vickery? No. So once again, we have, we have one, two, three, four, five no's? Five, five three no's. Three yeses. Five, five no's, three yeses. Mm -hmm. Okay, Andrew Mahan was nominated by Trustee Cordoro Alton. Mr. Carroll? No. Mr. Coleman? No. 
Ms. Cordero Alton? Yes. Ms. Mori? No. Mr. Powell? Yes. Ms. Somerville? Yes. Mr. Rodriguez? No. Mr. James Vickery? Yeah. No. So we're, mm -mm. hang on. Ms. Powell and Ms. Uh, Mr. Powell and Ms. Somerville, you voted twice. You can only vote for one candidate. Would you like us to re-roll the roll call or will you be sticking to your original vote? For Ms. Brown? Yes, that's fine. Mr. Powell. Mr. Powell is a no. get a chance to vote? I'm a little confused. You get one vote for the entire ballot. You vote for the person you think best for the job? Once. One vote, yes. I'm just a little confused, but everyone's name was called. I, I'm just a little confused. Yeah, that's because it has to be a roll call vote, but you only get one yes vote for the entire ballot. You only vote yes once for the candidate you think is best for the job. Would you like us to rerun the rolls? But some people voted no twice. Is that okay? No twice is fine. Yes once. It's like when you mark the mark okay. a ballot. Gotcha. It's like you're marking a ballot. You're just marking a ballot with your voice. Would you like us to rerun it? So on the final go around, I, I, I understand the yes vote. I'm okay with that. The final go around, do you get to say why you voted no, why you voted yes, or should we have okay. that at the time? Um, let me rerun this because now, because I need to know exactly who said yes or no, okay? Um, Mr. Carroll said no. Mr. Coleman is no. On who? Ms. Meehan. Okay. Cordero outed, right? Ms. Mori cannot vote yes, right? Lizette, Lizette voted yes. Ms. Mori voted no, which is good. Mr. Powell is a no. Ms. Somerville is a no. No, Ms. Mr. Powell needs to clarify where his vote is headed. Okay. Are you... So, so may I clarify what's going to happen? Mm -hmm. So, we take a round of nominations. That becomes a ballot. So, pretend you're looking at a ballot and it says vote for one. So, you get to check which one you want to vote for. Then, like in this case, it looks like we're going to be a tie. So that ballot is done. We have to throw it out because there was a tie. So in just a minute, once we realize if there's a tie, which it's, I mean, it, it result, no matter what you do, it's not going to matter. There's a, there's a tie. And then we will finish with that ballot. And then I will open up nominations again for ballot number two. So then we will do this process again, but it is the list that we nominate is one ballot and that one ballot, you get to vote for one. Vote yes for one. Vote yes for one. If you vote yes for one person, you can't vote yes for another person. Correct. So, so it's a technicality to just say no? Yes. Correct. <laughs> Correct. The no yes, simply no. indicates <laughs> that that wasn't yes. Okay, it, so let's get back to Andrew Meehan. Oh, I have Mr. Carroll is a no, Mr. Coleman is a no, <laughs> only Miss Cordero Alton is a yes. Am I correct? The only question, the only open question I have, because he didn't understand from the start, which might have been my fault, is if Mr. Powell intended to vote for Mr. Meehan over Dr. Brown, uh, we can either redo both of them again, which I think would be appropriate. We could redo the whole ballot. So there's a tie right now? Right now, mm -hmm. actually, there is not a tie. You no, have, not for any. You have four votes for Martin, mm -hmm. three votes for Brown, as it was originally stated. Mm -hmm. And then up to three votes for me. And what happens according to your policy is that in the event no candidate receives a majority of vote, which is this is in this case is five, another election process shall be conducted between the two candidates receiving the highest number of votes. 
So if your original vote stands and if Ms. Somerville's original vote stands, there would be a we would do another round of voting with just Mr. Martin and Ms. and Dr. Brown in, in the running. Should we rerun the vote? So we do you want your vote? original vote to stand with Dr. Brown or would you like to move it to Mr. Meehan? Um, so thank you. So now we, we will close out that ballot. And according to our bylaws, we will now move forward with the top two vote getters, which are Mr. Martin and Dr. Brown. So I'm going to give you a minute. Are you ready? I am ready. And I suggest that at this point that um, people explain their vote. Okay. So when you vote on no votes too, yeah. just on yes, on your yes vote, um, for transparency to the public, you would explain your vote for a yes vote. So you can't explain for a no vote. Nothing stops them. Nothing stops you. Okay. Okay. I mean, I'm not going to come across the table. So <laughs> <laughs> if you would like to, yes. I appreciate it. Thank uh, you. Okay. So we will start with Ms. Kenneth Martin, who was the mm -hmm. first nominated. Okay, so <clears throat> Kenneth Martin was nominated by Mr. Rodriguez. And Mr. Carroll voted yes. No, just, just you have to ask. do the roll call. Just, just do it again? Yep. Mm -hmm. <clears throat> Mr. Carroll. Yes. Explain why. Mr. Yes. Coleman, no, wait, give wait. him a second to explain his yes. Oh. Yeah, um, I say yes to Mr. Martin due to his experience as an SRO officer, um, especially being the first one in the state of New Jersey, and also working many years in the school system in Hackensack, and his um, dedication to the community. And, um, and, and being from here, knowing how things work in Hackensack, specifically Hackensack. Okay, uh, Mr. Colin? Yes. Appreciate his deep roots in the community, <laughs> familiarity and intimate knowledge of our school system. Ms. Cordero Alton? Uh, I vote no. Okay. So no. Ms. Morey? No. Mr. Powell? No. Ms. Somerville? No. And uh, again, Mr. Martin, honestly, it's not personal. I don't know you. This is the first time I'm ever meeting you. My issue is you have an organization you run a detective agency at some point in time, whether or not they may be a conflict between a client of yours and something that has to do with the board or a vendor would be hard pressed for us to vet. Deep roots are fine. I understand that. I myself am from Hackensack, born and raised. But again, not personal. I just think that's a clear, for me, that is a clear conflict. There's also maybe relationship with other organizations that was already discussed that no one here is sitting on the board is explaining. We appointing you don't have the ability to tell you that you need to fall back from those roles, right? I can't. So there is for me a clear like delineation of what we will do on the board and what may also be happening in personal that we don't have any transparency into. So again, it's not personal. I have never met you. You came in and you interviewed. I do not know you, but those are the issues that I would have in nominating you for this position. Mr. Rodriguez. Uh, yeah, I vote yes. Um, just, uh, you know, not only his, you know, lifelong residency to the community and uh, it's just, you know, just a, a long list of uh, awards and community service um, and his dedication to the district. So I vote yes. Mr. James Victory. Yes. Um, and I would echo the 
the roots and and, and to the um, he has through his time as a school resource officer um, been through many a board meeting where he has seen the culture of this district and the uh, board meetings and been able to help maneuver them uh, in the best way possible. So my, my vote is yes. Okay. The second nominee, Sophia Brown, was nominated by Maury, Trustee Maury. Mr. Carroll? No. Mr. Coleman? No. Ms. Cordero Alton? So I'm, I'm going to say yes. And uh, the reason why I'm saying yes is because I, I don't know if all of you can tell, but this is, this is my folder. This gray folder is my folder. It's, it's a folder I came in with. It was what I prepared for tonight. Um, and in this folder was my, was my short list. And so on my short list uh, after Andrew and, and another member who was not nominated uh, was Sophia. And in your interview today, um, I, I wrote on the top of the paper that I'll give back to Lydia, um, moms of moms, right? Mom of moms. And, and just reading what you provided us originally as, as paperwork, um, I loved it. And then in speaking with you today, or actually not speaking with you, because I didn't do much talking, but I did listen to you. Um, and I think that your heart is in the right place. Uh, and I can appreciate that. And I'm looking forward to having that on the board. Um, uh, so to Andrew, uh, I'm sorry. Um, and, and to Mr. Martin, um, I, 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 everything that you've done, I just want to, to add now. Um, and I have it written down, so it's not new. Uh, but everything that you've done and every contribution that you've made to this community do not go unrecognized. And I absolutely look forward to a continuing a working relationship if you do get on the board. And um, I would not even venture to say that my decision was personal because I don't know you. Um, and I would like to think that you would know that it's not personal, but uh, the things that you do and have done and will continue to do regardless of whether or not you're on the board, um, don't go unnoticed. You are a well-respected community member. And I just appreciate everybody who put in the pool. But if, if I have to agree, I'm going to have to say yes to Sonia Brown. Sophia Brown. I got five names up here. Thank you. <laughs> Ms. Morey? Yes. Um, so, Dr. Sophia Brown. Um, so, one thing I always look for is representation here on the board. Um, she has been a, rep um, a resident of Hackensack for a while. She is a mother. She is actively engaged in the community, um, which is something that we all need perspective on is as to what's what's happening in the community, who's out there in the community um, and talking to everyone. Um, I really liked her, her communication skills. Um, I felt that she was, she felt comfortable in expressing her, her ideas and just an overall very well personality. I think she would get along very well on the board. And also, I just want to thank everyone who did show up and stayed for the interview. We appreciate your time, um, and hopefully it wasn't much of an inconvenience for you guys. But thank you so much for coming up. Mr. Powell? Yes. I just first want to thank everyone for coming out and making the time for the interview. We do appreciate you. And it's good to see so many candidates. Mm -hmm. It shows that people really wants to serve. So I just want to thank you all. But uh, I also, I liked Mr. Meehan. I liked, uh, there's a couple of interviews that I liked. So that's, that's good. However, I just want to echo the sentiments of Ms. Maury and uh, Ms. Alton right here. Uh, regarding to what she just said, in terms of what you bring to the community. One of the things that really struck me during the interviews 
you know, was some of the answers were generic, but what really stuck, st struck me was when you mentioned uh, during COVID, the programs you had in place and all you did, not just for the people at Hackensack, but for the kids, everything you said went back to the kids. And I listened carefully to your interview and you were very passionate about the kids. Every, I don't know if people realize it, that almost every other sentence ended with the kids. This is what we need here on the board. We need to go back to basics where it's all about the kids. And just what both trustees said, I just want to echo it and endorse uh, what you just stated. And uh, all the candidates, there were a lot of good candidates, but you stood out to me. And we, we're here just to serve kids. And you were just so passionate and so candid mm -hmm. and so open about serving the community and serving our kids. So that's why. And uh, Mr. Martin, it's not a slight at you. You have done a lot for the community. And I appreciate you and I respect what you have done for us. It will never go unnoticed. I just want to say thank you. And but as uh, just my preference at this stage would be Miss Dr. Sophia Brown. I think she would really bring a different perspective to the board, which we need at this moment in time. Thank you. Thank you. Ms. Right. So mine is a yes for Ms. Brown. And Ms. Brown, I'm going to let you know that you came in, and like my other trustees said, you came in with passion, you came in with enthusiasm. I was honestly very impressed about the different programs that, right. again, I echo Lance that you had during COVID. For you to form and put together a community-based program, training in mental health, with a child focus, right? We had Health Expo to provide healthcare services with a focus on children in the community, multiple member of organizations, right? Every, uh, you were willing to commit without even knowing what it took. 40 hours, at first you said 40 hours a week, which shocked the babies out of me because that's a full-time job. But then to turn around and say that you would actually commit the 40 hours per month without even asking how much time, right, we were asking of you to put into the work and the effort, I think was commendable. You talked about things from a healthcare perspective. You went ahead and you explained about the education, the social and the physical, that it takes a holistic approach in order for us to move forward, children and children, health and growth. I mean, there's a ton of stuff I can't go through because we don't want to be here till midnight, all the stuff that you have gone into, right? But being a person who has, you know, come here, starting in the community, I give, again, I do not know Mr. Martin and I give much respect for anybody who's willing to do service. But we have to be a little bit more open-minded and say that, you know, everybody puts in service. Mr. Martin, your time is commendable. You have done really good work. I've heard from my colleagues very good things, you know, about you, and it's appreciated and noted. But again, we need fresh ideas and new people to the table and to have somebody else bring a different perspective. A lot of times we say, you know, oh, somebody has been embedded there, hack and sack, you know, and hack and sack 100%. That's fine and that's okay. But I don't think that takes away from Miss Martin being here 15 years that she's not hacking sack and into hacking sack and just the same and have the same commitment and passion that Mr. Martin would bring to the table. So I don't think her services and all the stuff that she's put in here, right, all the work and effort that a person who has migrated here to the community has put in on behalf of our kids should be discounted and not recognized or not given the same weight as the service that Mr. Right. Martin has put in over his duration as a resident of Hackensack. So again, for me, Dr. Brown is a wholesome yes, because I think she brings a fresh perspective to the table and I would appreciate her sitting here and assisting us in moving this board forward. Mr. Rodriguez. Oh, I know. Mr. James Vickery? No. So we have time. Okay, so here's our next here's our next step. Um, ballot is finished. 
will now start a new ballot where you may withdraw your nomination or we can add to the ballot. So, um, does anyone want to remove the nomination or does anyone want to add anyone to the ballot? I would like to add Mr. Meehan back to the ballot. Anyone else want to add to the ballot or subtract? So this is including the, the originals, correct? Yes, unless somebody no. wants to withdraw their, unless you, unless you, Anthony, or, oh, yeah, it was you, uh, or you, Miss Mari, want to withdraw your nomination of um, Ms. Martin, Mr. Martin or Ms. Dr. Brown, you can also choose to do that at this point. All right. Okay. So we will start with Mr. Martin. I'm doing it all over again. Yep. We're starting a new ballot. <laughs> yes. Okay. Mr. Carroll. This is for who? Oh, I'm sorry. Martin. Mr. Martin. Yes. For the reasons I said previously. Mr. Coleman? Yes. Ms. Cordero Alden? No. Ms. Mori? No. Ms. Somerville? No. Mr. Rodriguez? I'm torn, you know, uh, Dr. Brown was on my shortlist as well. And uh, Mr. Martin. Uh, you know, I don't think we can go wrong either way. I um trying to do the right thing here. I also don't want to be here all night. <laughs> <laughs> to be honest, you know, um, so uh, I'm going to, I'm going to go no on Mr. Martin right now. Mr. James Rickery? No. Mm -hmm. So second is Sophia Brown. Mm -hmm. Mr. Carroll. No. Mr. Coleman. No. Ms. Cordero Alton. No. Well, oh, because they threw Andrew back on the table. Oh. <laughs> It's all, right. it's all right, guys. Let no. the process no. work itself. Okay. Everybody gets a vote. Everybody gets their yeah. vote. Okay. Miss Mori. Yes. <laughs> Mr. Powell. Yes. Miss Somerville. Yes. Mr. Rodriguez. What's this for? Mr. Brown. Dr. Brown. Yes. Dr. Brown. You know, I, I got to say, like I said earlier, you know, and I, I, I uh, was torn between uh, Mr. Martin and, and Dr. Brown. She was very candid, uh, passionate, you know, uh, uh, and and my notes here, um, I have, you know, I, I, great vibe from her, you know, the son of the district, daughter graduated, you know, um, she did work for the kids, 
during COVID, and she seems passionate about the kids. You know, obviously she's not homegrown, but she's been here long enough to have the love and passion for the district. I'm going to go yes with Dr. Brown. Mr. James Rickard. No. So we're back to Mr. Meehan. Mr. Carroll. No. Mr. Coleman. No. Ms. Gardira Alton. Yes. Ms. Mori. No. Mr. Powell. No. Ms. Somerville. No. Mr. Rodriguez. No. Mr. James Vickery. Yes. Um, he generally understood the function of a board, that we do not act independently, that we are a team, a group that functions as a whole, which I appreciate. So we have another time. <laughs> yeah, we don't have a passage. Okay. So again, again, mm -hmm. it's yours, but um, I would, again, I'll open up the floor to people to remove, um, withdraw, or add nominee. On the vote again, and let's see where we're at. So, so we we have the mm -hmm. we have the ability to. Um, and let me just say that if we do not come to a agreement tonight, it goes to the executive. Um, someone makes a decision for us, so yeah. that is what we want to avoid. So, um, so the tie is the, Dr. Brown. Hey, hey guys, guys, can't, can't do that. That's not the A list. That's the question. So the tie is Dr. Brown or Dr. Or, 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 uh, Mr. Martin, right? Yeah. Actually, what happened here so is that to... there were four. There were four votes for Dr. Brown, two votes for Mr. Martin, two votes for Mr. Meehan. So we actually have a tie for second. So all three nominees would get run again. <laughs> <laughs> we need a five vote majority in order to continue. You have the option now to add or subtract. If you were the one who made the nomination and you want to withdraw your nomination, you're welcome to do so at this point. So we can withdraw and we can continue to add. Or nothing can happen and we can vote again. Okay. No, I, I didn't know I what his vote was, so I was confused. So uh, in clear transparency, I was just asking him because I missed what he said. So my apologies. Mm -hmm. So, uh, open the floor back to withdraw or add to the nominations. Now, quick question. So, in 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 trying to make this as easy as possible. Since I nominated Mr. Meehan first, then that went to the wayside. Then I'm the, the president, right? So it, it, I do not have the ability to remove that nomination yes. at this point, correct? Yes. Okay, correct. And I don't want to remove you, by the way, <laughs> but I would like to make this move. <laughs> I know we're getting a, a head shake from his story, and I don't like that. So <laughs> we got, I don't like the disappointment. Um, well, I definitely don't want somebody else making the decision for us. So what are the next steps? So, so we, we can we can remove or add to the the about to this next ballot. We'll run it again, the same exact so three. We can re right, but. Something's got to change. Something has to change. I mean, we can't keep doing the same thing over and over. Well, Is anybody at this moment willing to change their vote? Right? I, I think everybody is the way, because like I said, I, I thought you said something that you didn't say. So. You can open the floor to discussion and debate if you would like to. Oh, Now just remember we're in public, so let's do our deliberations out loud if we can. If there, you can only. Oh, yeah. Okay. All right. Sorry. Um, so it was four two two, right? Yeah, four two two. Yeah. So, wh what we will do is 
we will run that one one more time and see if we get any movement. If not, we will, I'll have a plan about that. Yo, um, Ms. Singh, will you run the ballot one more time? Okay, so um, Sophia Brown was number two. I'm not doing it in the same start order. With Kim, Kim, Kim start with Martin. Kev Martin again. <laughs> okay. Uh, Mr. Coleman. Mr. Coleman? Oh, sorry. Carol. Mr. Mr. Carol. Mr. Carroll. Mr. Carroll. See, I'm getting tired. I am getting tired. Mr. Carroll. Yes. Mr. Carroll. Mr. Carroll. Mr. Carroll is yes. Mr. Coleman. Yes. Miss Cordero Alton. No. Miss Mori. No. Mr. Powell. No. Miss Somerville. No. Mr. Rodriguez. No. Jeez, Mr. James Vickery. No. Okay, so she's got two yeses, four no's. Um, Dr. Sophia Brown was nominated by Maury. Mr. Carroll? No. <clears throat> Mr. Coleman? No. Ms. Cordero Alton? No. Ms. Mori? Yes. Mr. Powell? Yes. Ms. Somerville? Yes. Mr. Rodriguez? Okay, I have a question here. Um, well, I'm just not gonna get anywhere. We're going the same route here again. Okay, so we're gonna do this again. At, at, at some point then, Someone's gonna have to either add or remove, right? Because nothing's gonna get accomplished again. Well, if 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 a vote changes, it will change. Then we have to move to the top two vote getters. Mm -hmm. So if something changes, it could be between a, a different group Mr. of people. Mr. Meehan and Brown, right? Because Mr. Martin got five notes. It would depend. I mean, you get possible. Okay, so it, it, depending on this round, if we don't get five, it can be two new okay. different people. Correct. Possibly. Then it will be between okay. Meehan and Mr. Brown. Mr. Okay. Okay. What do you say? I'm going to go no right now. No. No. Mr. James Victory. <clears throat> No. So that's one, two, three, four, five no's. Three yeses. And three yeses. Mm -hmm. Mm -hmm. Three yeses. Okay, okay. Andrew Meehan, nominated by James Vickery. Mr. James Vickery. I'm sorry. Can I have, what was the count from Mr. Martin? Three and five. Oh, two and five. Two, 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 two and six. six. And six Thank you. no's. Mm -hmm. Okay, um, so for Andrew Meehan, Mr. Carroll. No. Mr. Coleman. No. Ms. Cordero Alton. Yes. Ms. Mori. No. Mr. Powell. One. Ms. Somerville. So here's a question, right? <laughs> Just to try to see if we can end this. I voted yes for Ms. Brown, but obviously with five no's, Ms. Brown is not going to make it. It's a three to five. So if I remove my vote as a yes from Ms. Brown and put my note to Mr. Meehan, right? Can I do that? Do it in the next round. Okay. Or just keep going. Just keep going. Keep going. You got it, Lydia. Miss Somerville. I, I already voted, so it has to be a no. That's why I'm, 
asking. I already voted yes for some of them. Mr. Rodriguez? Yes. Mr. James McCree? Yes. Okay. So we have now we have So now we will move to in this case the top two vote getters are Dr. Brown and Mr. Meehan. Yep. So we will start in the same order with Dr. Brown and Mr. Meehan. So we'll start with Dr. Brown. Mr. Carroll. No. Mr. Coleman. No. Ms. Cordero Alta. No. Ms. Mori. This is for, I'm sorry, Brown? This Hi. is for Dr. Brown, okay. yes. Yes. Mr. Powell. This is for Dr. Brown. You voted yes. I voted yes for Dr. Brown. Are you yes? Yeah. Okay. Ms. Somerville? No. Mr. Rodriguez? No. Mr. James Vickery? No. Okay. This is the vote for Andrew Meehan. Mr. Carroll? Yes. Mr. Coleman. I want to say that uh, I greatly appreciate everyone that came in and applied and interviewed and you all are very impressive candidates. And I hope this is not any indication that you should be dissuaded from the continued involvement in the community. And perhaps there's an election coming up in the fall that you want to take part in that. But um, based on the, uh, the tea leaves here, I'm voting yes. Very impressive. Mr. Cord Ms. Cordero Alton? Yes. Ms. Mori? No. Mr. Powell? You said I can't vote yes for us. Okay. <laughs> so you can't vote yes, Rob. I'm going to put you on my account. Ms. Somerville? I give up. <laughs> yes, I know. <laughs> Mr. Rodriguez? Uh, I, I want to, I'd like to echo uh, <laughs> Trustee Coleman and um, thanking everyone who came out. And oh, um, I, I'm going to say yes on Mr. Meehan. <laughs> Mr. James Victory? Yes. So we have one, two, three, four, five, six votes. Finally, <laughs> we have Victor. So be it resolved, the Hackensack Board of Education hereby appoints the board member candidate listed below, which is Andrew Meehan. Am I saying your name correctly? Tell me how you say it. Uh, Mian. 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 Yes. All right. Thank you. Andrew Mian uh, to serve as board member through the reorganization meeting of January 2024. Yeah. So we're going to take a five minute break because the attorney needs to speak with you about like the next little proceedings okay. that needs to happen. It's so, all happening right now. <laughs> All right, so five minute break, guys.
you. You still got that one. That's good. Yeah. Okay, roll call. At 9.17, uh, Mr. Carroll? Present. Mr. Coleman is not here. He's absent. Ms. Cordero Alton? Present. We lost a couple. Yeah. Ms. Mori? Present. Mr. Powell is not here. Ms. Somerville? Present. Mr. Rodriguez? Present. Mr. James Vickery? Present. Okay, so we have one, two, three, four, five, six. We have a quorum. All righty. So we're going to start with our superintendent's reports, uh, who will be offered tonight by Assistant Superintendent Andrea Oates Parchment. Okay, good evening, everyone. Good evening. Before I begin, I just want to ask that we keep Mr. Sanchez and his family in our thoughts and in our prayers. So as we close out this month of May, we can really say it was an eventful month. Uh, we began by recognizing Asian American, Native Hawaiian and Pacific Islander month and also Mental Health Awareness Month yes. and the meaningful activities that our, SL, our district SEL team planned for the month. And then we continued with Teacher Appreciation Day and week, and we acknowledge that our educators are the heartbeat of our district. Then Principal's Day was highlighted as well because our principals are the glue that holds everything together. We are still conducting NJSLA testing. It continues this week, and we celebrated Mother's Day. And as we close the month, of May, we want to acknowledge Memorial Day and we want to honor those members of our military who lost their lives serving in U.S. wars. Also want to congratulate the Seal of Biliteracy recipients and to our teachers who prepared them well. I want to acknowledge the high school for reaching all learners with their new alternative proposal. Um, now, as we move into June, we look forward to celebrating, moving up ceremonies, all of the end of the year activities, especially our concerts at the elementary schools that take place this week. And we want to also acknowledge the high school and middle school events. And I think Ash shared everything that we need to know. Uh, progress with our facilities. The field house and the fitness center is scheduled to be completed by the end of July. And now on to our student enrollment. We have 5,216 students. Residency checks are ongoing. There were 19 HIV investigations. And finally, I just want to say, to celebrate our wonderful, our talented, and our brilliant Hackensack High School students every day. We are blessed to have the best students in New Jersey, and I would say in the nation. They are the reason why we are here. And that ends my report. Thank you. Thank you. Very enthusiastic, I appreciate that. All right, so now it's time for our public comments portion all participants must sign in when it's your turn please state the following your name your municipality any group or affiliation that you might that might be important to us example a union member family member of a trustee etc um number two each person has a limit of three minutes at the end of that um a buzzer will sound so please um i will say thank you and that is uh your cue to please stop Three, please direct all comments to me as the presiding officer. And four, all responses will be held to the end of the public <coughs> participation. So first up. Good evening. Good evening, Bridget Hackensack. 
community activist advocator. Um, I would like to say thank you to the board for nominating Ms. Somerville to the, what is it, county board, BOE, I believe. So I would like to say um, thank you. Oh, everybody looks surprised. Did you not know she got nominated to the Bergen County BOE? Congratulations, Ms. Somerville. Hope you do a wonderful job for the county. Thank you. <laughs> and um, congratulations to the new uh, BOE member. Um, hopefully that he will do a great job for our district here and hopefully he's an independent thinker he's not easily led he actually makes decisions that are for the children so yeah let's see where this goes good night everyone thank you thank you oh, excuse me my gosh bless you thank you <laughs> Good evening, my name is Gwenny Burt, resident of Hackensack, alum, Hackensack Comets, member of the National Sorority of Phi Delta Kappa Incorporated, Delta New Chapter, which is an education sorority here in Bergen County, get to know who they are. Um, one, I wanted to go back to a comment that was made at our last meeting. It was a lot of conversation about the monstrosities, as we call them, that are being placed in buildings. And it was interesting because in order to get the point across, it seemed like we had to be dumbed down, you're not, we're not um, architects or whatever. And the comment I wanted to make was, we don't have an issue with the fact that they were put in the building. We have an issue with the fact that it was poorly communicated. And so it should have been communicated a lot better to um, our admins so that they could let us know on top of the fact that the whoever it is that's doing the work, we've had a lot of complaints, at least in our building at Hillers, we've had several complaints about leaving rooms in disarray. Um, I know I walked in my room and it was dust all over everything. So to have a bunch of kids that have asthma and allergies like myself, that was not a good thing to come into. I just think it was very poorly organized. And so a town hall would have been real nice just to sit down with the building and say, this is what's coming. Whether we agreed or not, we would have at least understood what was coming our way. Um, the other comment I have um, has to do with the board and comments. At the end of every meeting, board members are asked to give their comments. As people who come up during the public session, we're giving three minutes, but board members are comfortable with taking 10 or however minutes, many minutes to give their expressions. I think it's not a fair thing. It's kind of like holding us hostage while we listen to all the things as you recap what everybody at the table said. Um, I don't know that it's necessary for you to recap what the board member said, give your comments. That's what the, I thought that section was, not to recap and then give comments. And so I think it's unfair. Um, the other thing is I think that it's also not professional for board members to have to um, address what they don't agree with that another board member said. They don't need to say that. I think that's petty. It sounds childish, sounds very high schoolish. And so as board members, you need to address what you feel and that has nothing to do with anybody else. It's your feelings, not with, if you disagree with someone else, talk to them offline, talk to them elsewhere. But we as a public should not have to sit in a board meeting and listen to you go around the whole table and you don't agree with this, but you agree with that. You weren't here for that. You were asleep during this. You were like, we shouldn't have to hear all of that. Like that has nothing to do with what's really going on. Um, and I'm hoping that, that that's a better way to communicate. We talk about being professional. We talk about doing what's best for our kids. It makes it difficult to discuss what's best for our kids when most of the time it's been talking about us. And so we need to spend less time having a conversation about us and more time about deciding what's best for our kids. Have a good evening. Thank you. Thank you. Good evening, Donna West, Hackensack resident, uh, HEA board president, third grade teacher in LK Parker School. I just wanted to echo uh, Gwenny Burt's comments, um, but I did want to ask if the public is limited to three minutes, is there any way to limit the amount of time that the board speaks? Um, 
we were literally, it felt like held hostage here for like three hours last month. Um, and then on May 1st, the same topic was brought up again. Um, I find that the board seems to um, definitely be divided on certain issues. But as I said once before, we don't need you to air your dirty laundry here. We're all here for the children. And it took a lot of time. I was getting text messages. People were basically saying, what are they talking about? No one even knew what you were talking about. And anybody that wanted to know why Mr. Oates resigned could have just called him because he called me and told me why. Um, so I think a lot of time is often spent with all of you fighting with each other. Um, and it doesn't look good in the public. It doesn't look good uh, for the children. It doesn't help with the staff when I'm trying to uh, get them to, uh, for whatever decisions that are made and I'm you know, trying to either explain why the board did something. And it, it just, like, like Gwenny Burt said, it, it just didn't look really good. And I know you don't often do that, but please keep that in the back of your mind going forward that you really do need to look more united, especially to all of us who really don't know what's going on. And if it doesn't, if we don't need to know, I know you're for transparency, but if we don't need to know, please don't bring it forward. Please keep that in executive session because it's definitely better served there. We could use this time to definitely be talking about our children. Um, and Ashraf's not here, but maybe he's listening. I'm proud of him. He said he'll be at some of those things. I had uh, two of his siblings, because there's a lot of them. I had two of them, and they are a smart family. And um, really proud of the way our children are finishing this year. Um, if you get a chance, I know I've already reached out to the males on this board. Females, you cannot show up. Don't try to put a mustache, anything on. It's he reads to me, uh, oh, I'll be, but I'm- I gotta be I'll be there. Okay, thank you so much. <laughs> We're excited about that. Um, you mentioned the concerts that are coming up. The children have worked really hard. We are really trying to finish the year strong um, with everything that has come up against them um, and us, and then us collectively as a community. It would really be nice for us to finish this year looking like we're all working toward the same goal. Thank you so much. Thank you. Thank you. Thank you. Anybody? Well, there's nobody really. Ms. Story, you got anything to say? <laughs> <laughs> Dr. Brown, anything to say? All right. Um, anybody online? All right. All right. So All right. that's the end of that. Let me quickly. Um, so, uh, Ms. Burt, the communications thing, absolutely. Um, we understood that, and I, I do know that um, the um, project manager took that point and went to Dr. Soto and met with her, and for the subsequent two weeks, they know exactly what rooms are going in, when, and trying to supposedly work that out. If it's still not working, um, please let Dr. Soto know and then she can pass that up the chain. Um, but I do know there was an effort made to fix that. So let us know. Um, it's not working right <laughs> I don't know that we have, or I don't think I have the authority to say that board members can limit that time. <laughs> It would have to be a bylaw. It would have to be a bylaw change to limit the time of board members, which I guess we could do at some point if that was a thing of the body. Um, but I do think it is important for us to be cognizant of everyone's time. Um, and then um, to the other point, it is two things. It is complicated many times when it comes to transparency, because we get called on, you're not being transparent, then you are like, then you're too transparent. But in that instance, it was a matter of correcting the record. And I will stick to that. Um, so let's move on to our resolutions. The first, uh, be it resolved that the Hackensack Board of Education approves the regular minutes and closed session minutes of April 24th and special meeting Minutes of May 1st, 2023 as submitted. Can I have a motion to approve those minutes? Motion. Thank you, Mr. Carroll. A second? Second. Thank you, Ms. Somerville. All those in favor say aye. 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 Any no's? 
and there are none. Now, the motion passes, yes. Now we will move on to our consent agenda. Those are passed in a block. So, hang on, let me get to it. Um, what? 33, yeah. Can I start here? Yeah. Um, be it resolved in the event of the Board of Education determines. Nope. Be it. No. Starts on page 11. I'm missing it because. Just request. I'll just ask if anybody, if there's a motion on the consent agenda. So, can I have a motion to pass the consent agenda as is? Motion. Thank you, Ms. Somerville. A second, Mr. Carroll. Second. All in, do we need to do a roll call? Discussion is there any discussion on the consent agenda? Uh, no. Uh, no, we, we have that in the executive. I'm good. Thank you. Okay, roll call. Mr. Carroll? Yes. Mr. Coleman is absent. Ms. Cordero Alton? Yes. Ms. Maury? Yes. Mr. Paul is back here. <coughs> Ms. Hummerville? Yes. Mr. Rodriguez? Yes. Mr. James Victory? Yes. Most Thank passes. Thank you. Um, so moving on to personnel, um, Mr. Coleman is not here, so, um, I will do that. To, can I do that or do I have to, um, so I will move a one a through UU. We have a very large agenda. So if you will look at the, um, the addendum which is a large, um, this is where we um, are re-upping most of our staff. Yes, that's so um, can I have a motion? A motion. Thank, well, I actually made the motion, sorry. A second, Mr. Rodriguez. And then, um, is there any, we can't, oh, okay. um, and then, so, um, you have A1 to A to you. Mm -hmm. Personal agenda. Um, Mr. Carroll? Yes. Mr. Coleman is not here. Ms. Cordero? Alton? Yes. Ms. Mori? Yes. Mr. Powell is not here. Ms. Somerville? Yes. Mr. Rodriguez? Yes. Mr. James Vickery? Yes. Motion passed. Great. Um, policy, would, would you do that for us? Sure. So uh, we asked the board be resolved that the Hackensack Board of Education upon the recommendation of the superintendent of school approves first read of the following policies and regulations. All of these policies and regulations will be posted on the school website and they will also get an email to all the teacher and staff from um, Ms. Rosemary Marks on the new um, policies and any changes or updates. There is no policies that are for second reading. All right, thank you, Ms. Somerville, I appreciate that. So Ms. Somerville made a motion. Can I have a second? Second. Thank you, Mr. Carroll. Um, roll call, please. Mr. Carroll. Nope, so there's any discussion? Any discussion? Any discussion? And if none, now, thank you. Mr. Carroll? Yes. Mr. Coleman is absent. Ms. Carroll Alden? Yes. Ms. Maury? Yes. Mr. Powell is absent. Ms. Somerville? Yes. Mr. Rodriguez? Yes. Mr. James McCree? Yes. Motion passes. Thank you. Ms. Maury? Yes. Um, so for curriculum, we have items C1 through C22. I just wanted to highlight C9, which is the approval of the following drop in center um, programs for the summer of 2023 <laughs> um, for the high school students and incoming ninth grade students. For C10, it's an agreement with Dial to Action Agency to provide BMX bicycle smart choices and bike safety assembly to the middle school students. Um, and it's paid for by the middle school PTA. 
uh, C-19. It is the approval of the school-based research study agreement between Kane University and Hackensack High School Science Department to conduct a school-based research study and survey about climate change for the next school year. And students enrolled will take a pre and post survey upon parents' approval. Um, and I bring forward C-1 through C-22. Thank you. A motion from Ms. Marr. Can I have a second? Second. Mr. Carroll, any discussion? And there's none. Mr. Carroll? Yes. Mr. Coleman is absent. Ms. Cordero Alton? Yes. Ms. Morin? Yes. Mr. Palmer is absent. Ms. Somerville? Yes. Mr. Rodriguez? Yes. Mr. James Hickory? Yes. Motion passes. Thank you. Moving uh, on to uh, finance. Um, Mr. Rodriguez. Yes, sir. Uh, well, Steve, I would like to bring forth items D1 through D15 for your approval. Okay. Can I have a second for that? Second. Thank you, Ms. Somerville. Any discussion on those? <clears throat> I don't know if it requires a discussion. I'm not in agreement with D6, so I'm fine to vote on everything except for D6 in particular. Okay. And um, I do not. <laughs> so just so that everyone understands what that is, that is basically what that is, is all of the school districts in New Jersey have this um, resolution on their agendas this month. Mm -hmm. And what they're trying to do is, so whoever the, the writers of this bill are, they'll be able to say when they go in front of Governor Murphy to say, look, all of these school districts of the 600 and however many have signed saying that they want this to pass. Um, and so what, um, what this is, is us saying, signing on, basically saying that we would like this, you know, to be on the list of schools that support this. This is not approving anything, it's supporting, uh, it would be supporting this. And what it is, is saying that a, a, a person who drives a school bus would only be required to have an S endorsement. And that means that they learned the requirements to load and offload students. Um, for me personally, who drove a school bus for 17 years, you there's a a big component to driving a 35,000 pound school bus. That is like there's a lot you really need to know that's important when when driving and operating a 35,000 pound vehicle, other than just loading and unloading students. So for me, I have a problem with it as well. But that's why I kind of highlighted when when in the summary to everybody just you know research it and figure it out on your own so um any other discussion or comments about that if anybody has insight on the differences that would carry between a cdl and or just having an s type that would be helpful i honestly could not find anything i did do my due diligence trying to research uh i can get you the regulation yeah uh, i will I, I understand what a cdl no, is no, i'll I reach out to somebody difference. and actually get you the legislation i call some i don't need the legislation again i've read it the problem that i have is i need to understand what a type yeah. s is it is it's and the in, requirement it, it's inside of Perfect. the legislation. It tells you exactly what's a type S and it goes through all of the details and the difference. So okay, I'll, if you can show me yeah. that, because I've looked at it. I'll, I'll, I'll call somebody and I'll get you a copy of Thank it. Thank you. All right. Sorry, so do you want, or is Ms. Cordero Alton asking us to vote, asking you to vote on D6 separately or? So, in general, when we do it, we can we say I, yeah um, yes to all, but abstain from six. D six or you know no to D six or, or yeah. 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 So let's do a roll call. Miss Summerbell. Miss Summerbell, you did. Mr. Carroll. Yes. Mr. Rodriguez. Yes. Mr. Corbin is absent. Ms. Cordero votes. Everything, yes, except B6. Abstain from B6. Abstain from B6. Okay. 
Thank you. Ms. Morin. Um, I abstain on D6 and D9. And yes to all. D6 and D9. Yes, D6 and D9. Mr. Powell is not here. Ms. Somerville. Ms. Somerville. Yes. Mr. Rodriguez. Uh, yes, I'm going to also abstain from D6. Mr. James Whitford. Um, yes to all and voting no to D6. So D6 does mm -hmm. not pass. Mm -hmm. Mm -hmm. Yes. D6 does not mm -hmm. pass. D9 passes and the rest passes. And. Yes. Moving on to facilities, uh, again. Yes, okay, Mr. President. And I would like to bring forth motions E1 through E7 um, for your approval. Thank you. Um, a second, please. Second. Thank you, uh, Mr. Carroll. And any discussion on any of those? And there's none. Mr. Harris? Yes. Ms. Cordero Alton? Yes. Ms. Boring? Yes. Mr. Powell is not here. Ms. Somerville? Yes. Mr. Rodriguez? Yes. Mr. James Guthrie? Yes. Motion passes. Thank you. Any new business tonight? Any old business tonight? All right, moving on to board comments, keeping in mind what our um, esteemed public uh, reminded us of. So, um, Mr. Powell's not here. Ms. Somerville. So, uh, I will keep it short. Let's <laughs> work. I'm going to keep it short and sweet. I don't want you coming for me later, okay? <laughs> so, uh, uh, just a couple of shout outs and thank you. Uh, Ms. West, I did not make the um, ATA retirement dinner uh, yeah. this year, mm -hmm. but my son hosted and I heard you guys had a, ro a rocking time at the dinner. So I heard, you know, a, a lot of fun and enjoyment. I heard that everybody really had a good time and he was very, you know, excited to see some of his former educators from Fairmont School that were coming up for retirement. So thank you for entertaining him. And he said you guys tipped well, so way to go, guys. <laughs> so way to go for a fellow Arkansas student, right? Keeping them employed. Um, to the Fairmont kids for inviting us out to their pan flapjack breakfast, right? I think this was like uh, two Saturdays ago. So that was awesome. They did not run out of sausages, everybody. They still had sausages for breakfast. So it was a really good time. And those kids, honestly, when I say they did a phenomenal job at hosting, it was impressive. They were on point, they were on time, they seated people. And let me tell you, you could not get breakfast if you did not have that ticket. <laughs> These guys were not joking. One kid sent his mom back to go purchase a ticket. He was like, oh, no freebies. You would need a ticket in order for you to get breakfast. So again, it was a really good time. You know, definitely appreciate it. Uh, um, Mr. So Ms. Rutger made the announcement, and again, it wasn't anything spectacular. It is just the New Jersey School Board. I guess somebody nominated for the New Jersey School Board Executive Committee. So it was just the nomination. So again, I appreciate her for you know that popping across her radar and for her you know saying um, congratul congratulations. Ash did a phenomenal job, and again, I just want to say you know um, we see the audience. There's people online, and I'm just asking for the parents. You know, I know it's a lot. I know everybody's busy. And like they said, this thing runs, you know, sometimes it feels like in perpetuity. But I'm just asking the parents to please come out, you know, really and truly trying to get the parents back out and in the audience because we're nothing without them, right? If they're not here to advocate on behalf of their, you know, their children, on behalf of students, and just let us know how they're feeling the pain points. It's really hard for us as a board beyond the executive decisions that, you know, we need to make on, a, on the three subject matters that we have authority over. It's really hard then to move stuff forward when they're not here. They're an integral part of who we are. And again, I'm asking the teachers, I'm asking the administrators, I'm asking you to go to your neighbors, but let's do the best we can to start getting our parents back in attendance to these meetings because their perspective is invaluable. 
So again, that was it from me. Thank you very much, everybody. Uh, congratulations to uh, Mr. Martin. Looking forward to representation matters, right? So I think he's a really good fit. I think that'll be a representation to our, you know, me and me and me. I'm sorry, sorry. Good God, not Mr. Martin. I, I take that back. Of course, correct, Mr. Meehan. Thank you, ladies. Uh, I think representation matters, and I think he would be a very good addition, you know, to our Asian population to have so, a representation they can see themselves represented on the board. So, congratulations to him, and looking forward to the things to come. Thank you, thank you, thank you, um, Ms. Mari. Um, first, I wanted to um, give my sincere condolences to the Sanchez family. Um, it's been a very difficult um, past few months for them. My prayers and thoughts um, go out to the family. Much strength and peace for the family. Um, I wanted to, lots of congratulations, a lot, a lot of things going on here in Hackensack. Um, congratulations to the New Jersey State Seal of Biliteracy Award winners. Um, phenomenal. I also wanted to congratulate Ms. Moncloa on her beautiful Italian. That was phenomenal. I was in, extremely impressed. Uh, to our new trustee, appointed trustee, um, Mr. Meehan, um, congratulations. Look forward to working with you. Um, Thank you so much for your report, and thank you for all the updates on the uh, the events that are happening and that did happen. I wanted to thank the high school administrators for their presentation on the alternative program, and thank you for presenting uh, that same presentation during the curriculum and that you took our feedback and you went ahead and, and adjusted certain things for today's presentation. Um, to... The middle school, I wanted to congratulate and thank all the teachers who made sixth grade camp possible. It was truly, as a parent, my child went on the sixth grade camp trip and I was worried because this was the first time, no cell phones, no nothing out there by themselves. And I didn't know what was going to happen. I didn't know if I, he was going to come back with nothing or if he was, you know, come back in one piece. You never know. And I want to thank the media, the social media, whoever's in charge of social, me social media was on it. They made me feel so like I was a part of it, but yet I knew that they were all having a wonderful time. Um, and it also reminded me when I went to sixth grade camp and I was like, oh, this is what we did. This is awesome. Um, and these kids looked exhausted when we went to go pick them up, um, but they were very happy. So congratulations to I appreciate all the teachers who went to all the parents that I saw that they cried when they saw their child, you know, after a full week um, or when they dropped them off. It, it was hard, but it was definitely meaningful to them. And I, I show, I'm, per, I'm positive that those kids have a very good, memorable um, experience. Um, on top of it, it was Teacher Appreciation Week. I loved seeing all the schools shouting out their teachers, doing ice cream trucks or um, having... Um, like food, like prepared, like a full like buffet. I, I don't even know what, what to call it, but um, it, it's nice to see teachers being appreciated. And of course it shouldn't just happen that week. It should happen as often as we can because you guys do a lot. Um, to our students that are graduating to the class of 2023, um, there are about 21 to 22 days left of you here. And as a Hackensack graduate, this is actually my 20th year. Um, we'll be having our 20th year um, reunion soon. And one suggestion I would say is go to every event. Go say hi to the friends that you don't say hi to anymore. Because um, come June, that once you cross the bridge and once you go on stage, that's literally going to be the last time you're going to see many of these faces. And it's not because you don't want to see them. It's not because um, it, it's just like everyone goes off to college or goes off to work or, or starts living life. And these 21 to 22 days that you have left, cherish them, take pictures, go to the events, don't hold grudges go to as many things as you can um, and best of luck and congratulations to everybody who's um, getting an award 
um, for all the banquets, the top 20 dinner. I'm looking forward to that. And I believe that is it. Oh, one more shout out. Um, we have a trustee who earned their third master's here, Mrs. Somerville. Congratulations. She received her third master's at um, uh, St. Peter's? Yes, St. Peter's at St. Peter's. Um, so that's a wonderful accomplishment. <laughs> Thanks, Jim. I'm working on my one. <laughs> so <laughs> three is huge. Um, and that's it, everyone. Thank you so much for coming out and have a good night. Thank you. Uh, Mr. Carroll? Good evening. Um, Again, condolences to Mr. Sanchez and his family. Um, he has been going through a rough few months. Um, prayers go out to him and his family. I want to congratulate all the bilingual students who have won awards tonight. And um, thank you to the curriculum committee and the high school um, staff for their time and hard work preparing the alternative school I think is needed. And um, that's a good job that they did. Um, congratulations to the baseball and volleyball teams for their great accomplishments this year. And I'd just like to congratulate the newly appointed board member, Mr. Mann. And that's it for tonight, thank you. Uh, all right, thank you, um, Mrs. Cordero Alton. No comment. All right, wow. Um, uh, Chris is not here. Ms. Rodriguez. Well, I'm going to keep it brief. Uh, I want to just give a shout out to all the kids, um, the wonderful students, the scholars that are doing so much. You know, while uh, Ms. Moncoya was uh, presenting the Biliteracy Award, there were some kids that couldn't be here because they're off doing awesome things. <laughs> they couldn't be here because they were in Kansas City, you know, um, competing on, on the Imagination Award. These kids are so um, gifted, so uh, well-rounded, so amazing. Um, we've got the best kids here in the city, in, in, in this city, in this district. Um, it's uh, it's it's bittersweet that it's the end of the year. It's it's exciting because all the festivities, the moving on ceremonies. Uh, obviously, our work continues over the summer, um, where we do a lot of the heavy lifting that happens in the facilities, especially. Um, and but uh, you know, uh, I want to thank thank all the teachers who uh, who their work never stops. You know, in the summer they're they're starting to prep for the for, for the fall, and and they're you know they're working on. Um, you know, even in their classrooms and, 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 and so much more. So thank you to the teachers. I uh, concur with uh, Trustee Somerville. I would like to see more parents here um, because, uh, I mean, we, we never hear, the, I mean, we're all parents here, but we never hear, the, you know, the general consensus. <laughs> so like, I would love to see more of that because if you go through the history of the archives of all, all the, uh, the meetings, it's, you will rarely see a parent or a student here. It's usually... Uh, the, the same couple of teachers or citizens that show up. So it, it'd be great to have more uh, uh, of um, uh, people voice uh, their opinions their, and, and their concerns. Um, overall, you know, uh, I want to congratulate Mr. Meehan. Overall, I think that we're moving in the right direction uh, and we have been. Um, but like I said, I wanted to keep it brief. So thank you all for being here. Those that stood this long, uh, everyone have a good evening. Uh, and Next time will be the summer, I guess, when we see each other. So enjoy the summer. Thank you. So um, I too will keep it brief. I will say um, thank you, Miss Moncloa, for uh, a job well done and all the kids. That's my favorite part to get to do is um, give out those types of um, certificates and awards. And um, I'm thankful for the job that you've already jumped into uh, from the beginning. And uh, the athletic teams that, that Ash talked about, um, we're thankful you know, and excited for them. Um, Mr. Meehan, we're, Meehan, I'm gonna get that straight. <laughs> no. um, we are um, glad um, that we were able to resolve that tonight and excited for his um, start. I will say uh, that the teachers and the paras are the heartbeat of this district and what we do and we're thankful and our district staff um, from our tech and 
all the people that make it work, they're the glue that keeps it all running. And um, we're thankful. Uh, and I will say thank you to those of you who uh, stick it out with us, the public and the staff that are diligent in coming. I, um, I say thank you. Um, we're a lot. <laughs> so <laughs> I appreciate um, y'all coming. And um, may I have a motion to adjourn? Motion. Thank you. All those in favor, say aye. Aye. All right. Good night. Listen, I got a lot of people too. <laughs> Do you want these? No.